Yo, what's up guys? This is Brent again, and this is tutorial 6, and in this tutorial we're going to talk about EJS and Body Parser as middlewares. And uh, EJS is a templating engine um, that uh, is similar to HTML, uh, except it, we're going to be able to embed some code in it so the server can send data uh, to the document and change it, you know, uh, for reasons such as like, uh, you enter a wrong password when you're logging in, well, the server can send a message back to your client and say, oh, uh, you know, invalid username or password. Uh, so uh, with that said, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started, and we'll start with uh, the package.json file. Okay, so a couple new things we're going to need here are EJS, uh, the latest version of it. and body parser. I'm going to go tell you a little bit about what that is here shortly. And let's get the latest version of it. So save that. Down here, npm install. Let's go ahead and get all that installed. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to edit our server.js file and we're going to bring in the body parser. see a pattern here by now. Uh, body parser. Then what we're gonna do is down here, probably right after our cookie parser, app.use body parser. And actually uh, it requires this now uh, in its new version to say that it's basically URL encoded, which is normal for most HTML forms. Um, and, and then extended means we can not only just send, uh, I believe, text, strings, and arrays, but pretty much any objects uh, that can be sent in forms. Uh, so we'll do extended is true. So that, like I said. Um, now what? one more thing uh, we're going to add is we're going to say, tell our app, uh, to set the view engine, and the view engine is what kind of templating engine we're going to be using and where our actual web pages are going to reside. So view engine, and we're going to set that to EJS, and there's uh, a lot of other view engines. Uh, one of them is Jade, which is the default engine for Node.js, but uh, EJS is better for me, and Jade has a weird syntax. If you want to go look it up, I'll put a comment below, but it's crazy. Okay, so with that done, uh, we're going to go ahead and move on. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, go to our views folder, and you'll see that I've created two files, an index.ejs and a signup.ejs, and uh, we're going to go ahead and edit those now. Um, now, I've already wrote out, or actually I've copied from a website called scotch.io. It's basically a, a tutorial website, um, but it, they've got, they wrote some boilerplate HTML kind of stuff uh, that I'm going to just go ahead and paste in here. Um, and the first thing you'll notice is it's just basic web page. Uh, it's got a jumbotron. It brings in bootstrap, so you'll see some familiar things. And this is basically just the index page that we're going to go to, and it's going to have a button that says a register um, or sign up, okay? And it's going to take us to our sign up page. And uh, speaking of sign up page, let's go ahead and edit that. Uh, I've already, again, I've wrote out the HTML, um, and I'll put a, a link to the HTML. Um, so we'll paste this down here. Now, uh, this is going to, you're going to see something a little bit different. Uh, now, this right here is where we're going to be, is where uh, HTML and EJS uh, differ. Uh, right here, I can put a conditional uh, statement in my HTML, and it says, if the server has sent a message and that message's length is greater than zero, go ahead and alert us and show the message. So when you, get, when you um, put in the wrong username or password in a form, uh, you'll notice that sometimes the server sends a response back saying username or password invalid. Well, this is one way to replicate that. So this is going to be our login form, a simple HTML form, uh, you know, with an email and a password, and it doesn't even ask you to confirm. So uh, this is a sign-up form, not logon. So 
With that done, uh, we'll go ahead and move on to our routes. Okay, so let's go to our routes.js folder, and the first thing we're going to do is um, edit our default route. So instead of res.send, we're going to do res.render our template for index, so index.ejs. Let's go ahead and save that, and I'm going to just show you all what that looks like really quick. Uh, node server.js. And then we'll go here to our localhost. And you'll see that we got a node authentication and we'll do a local sign up. So this isn't set up yet, so let's go ahead and make that. Okay, so we're going to need two more routes. Uh, they're kind of similar. Uh, they're going to be a git and a post. Um, app.git um, slash sign up. And then the function request response. And then we'll just res.render our signup.egs folder. And uh, just to show you, I'm going to show you how that message works uh, that was in the signup. So let's look and see what the message was called. It was called, it was just called message. So we're going to send it an, uh, uh, an object and it's going to have uh, message in it and then we'll just say victory so that's the server sending to the EJS EJS template um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an app dot post and this is what happens when they actually submit the form on the sign up page it's gonna post to our server um, slash sign up function request response now we're basically going to do the exact same thing as right here so let's just copy and paste that here and instead of uh, request.params it's going to be request.body because uh, the body parser uh, puts all of our form data into a request.body object and then we can uh, basically get it on from the request object on every transaction so request.body um, but let's double check here because I believe we called it email um, name equals email and password so instead of username we're gonna request.body.email and we'll put that as our username and uh, our password will be our password. So we can go ahead and kill this line. And then what we're going to do is we'll redirect them. So response.redirect and where we're going to redirect them to. So let's just redirect them back to the home directory. So let's save that and uh, let's test it. So I just uh, ran a quick test and I found one error and it was that extended was set to true and I've just changed it to false. Um, really because all we're using is uh, a string so basically for username and password. We really don't need to set it to true. I'm really not sure why that error is happening. Maybe somebody else knows and can post it in the comments below. That would be awesome. Uh, but setting it to false solves the error. So let's go ahead and uh, open up our start it up node server.js we're going to go ahead and run let's go to localhost local sign up and here you can see uh, where our message is from EJS uh, it says victory so the server sent that to the client um, let's go ahead and do a username Brentarelli and our password abc123 super secure password um, sign up we got redirected back to our home page now let's look at uh, robomongo here and we'll refresh our users look at this local and we can see uh, that it's been posted to our database Bernarelli abc123 and it's pretty much as simple as that so so let's really quick take a look at uh, the documents or uh, you know help files or whatever. Here is EJS um, embedded js.com. Uh, you can find a lot of information on conditional statements, how to 
uh, put in variables, all that kind of stuff here. Lots of stuff that you can do with EJS, and that's a tutorial series on its own. Um, but it's very powerful, and it lets you do stuff with HTML that you otherwise couldn't when connected to a server. Um, body parser is, of course, on GitHub, like most of our middlewares are in the Express.js section. Um, lots of information on body parser. It can do, instead of just parsing forms, it can parse JSON. Um, it can uh, pos uh, parse plain text. Uh, URL encoded texts, which is what we were using, um, and a variety of some other things. Um, for right now, we're just going to be sticking with what we've used with Body Parser. We probably won't even touch it again. Um, so I think that's the end of this tutorial. Uh, in the next tutorial, I'm going to introduce y'all to Nodemon. And Nodemon is basically a way to, instead of how we've been loading up our server over and over and over again, every time we change any file, um, it's going to do that automatically for us anytime any of the files change because it's getting, now that we're getting larger uh, uh, amounts of files going on, changing the server every time is kind of getting a little tedious. So I'm going to hook you all up with that next time. It'll make things a whole lot simpler, and then we'll continue the tutorial series. Thanks so much. See you guys next time.